Hey toy fans, welcome back to the Spectra Creative channel. Today I am going to address a question that comes up all the time at conventions and uh, kind of when I do podcast interviews. Where are my 2000X classic figures? Why can't you do the 2000X style in classics? Why was classics just based on vintage? Well, it's time to clear off the dust, address this issue, and see if I can explain it once and for all. Well, for starters, we did do 2000X characters in classics. We just did them in the same style as all of the other figures. But looking at the way they come out, a lot of fans would still look at these figures and say, well, wait a minute, that's not what I meant. I want a 2000X figure, not an interpretation of that 2000X figure. And sometimes we would try doing heads, but at the end of the day, this was not getting out the main characters in the 2000X style that fans wanted. So to answer this, let's first take a step back and look at the way Classics was a reinterpretation of the vintage line. And I've used this metaphor before, so bear with me if this is just a little bit repetitive. Okay, let's pretend you have a machine, a machine that can make toys where you would take one toy and put it on one side of the machine and then out of the other side of the machine would come the version of the toy that you want. All right, with me so far? All right, so now let's say this machine has two buttons and each button represents the type of toy you'll get. So if you were, for example, to feed a vintage He-Man figure, into the opening side of the machine and you were to press the button labeled 2000X, that machine would take the vintage figure and apply the artistic interpretation and styling of the 2000X line and apply it to the source material. The source material being this vintage He-Man figure. And up, what you would get on the other side of that machine would be this, a 2000X He-Man complete with all the oversized weapons, the anime hair, the extra pockets, the rippling muscles, etc., etc. Everything that stylized and was the, the, the artistic interpretation of the 2000X Mike Young Productions animated series and Mattel toy line. All right, so now going back to our machine, again, we got two buttons, right? The other button is labeled Classics. So you take that same source material, the same vintage Masters of the Universe He-Man figure, and now by pressing the other button labeled Classics, it's going to apply the Classics articul excuse me, the Classics interpretation to that figure. Instead of getting anime hair and extra pockets and oversized weapons, the interpretation or the style of classics is an idealized version of the toy we had as kids, of the vintage figure. It's not an anime style version, it's an idealized version. They're both reinterpretations of the same source material. So again, what I mean by this is Artists, when they look at things, add their own interpretation of the events, and they can add their own style. For example, if you were just going to look at a human face, different artists interpret that differently. This is Pablo Picasso and how he interpreted the human face. Versus you could take that same human face, and if it was interpreted by, say, Rembrandt, you might get something more like this. But the idea is both of these artists started with the same source material of a plain human face. This is just an example. I'm not an art critic, but I want to try to explain. So that vintage He-Man figure that you used as your source material, one artist, i.e. Mike Young Productions, is going to interpret that character in an anime look with all of the armor and the oversized weapons. Another artist is going to take that same source material, this being the Four Horsemen, and interpret that as an idealized action figure. Where they're both using the same process, and they're both using, if you will, metaphorically, the same magic machine, and feeding the same source material into one side, but because they have different artistic interpretations of the material, they're going to get something else. And it's not just limited to two interpretations. There could be hundreds of buttons on this machine and hundreds of different ways of interpreting 
action figures into different styles, different looks, different feels. Mattel is even trying this again with a new look called Origins, which is yet another interpretation of the same vintage He-Man figure, but now done in an articulated 5-inch way with swappable parts. Cool, right? Okay, but let's get to the core question. I'm going to use Buzz Off as an example because he's a really good example for this. What fans were really asking is, why can't I get a highly articulated action figure of the 2000X Buzz Off in 6-inch scale? And for that, there's, we're actually going to have to look at a couple other behind-the-scenes reasons to answer that question. So, you know that we did the 2000X heads. Buzz Off was one of them. This one was actually sculpted at the time of Buzz Off, but wasn't released until the head pack. Now, when you apply a 2000X styled head to a classics figure, well, it doesn't quite look right. The heads are really cool, and I'm thrilled that we were able to do this. But looking at the way the heads are with the classics body, well, there's definitely a bit of a mix match here. You're not quite getting a 2000X figure. You're not quite getting a classics figure. This is kind of what some of my colleagues at Mattel would have called a sofa bed toy. If you were truly going to do a 2000X buzz off, you needed to be able to do a body that was original. It wasn't going to work on a classics body because he has that thin insectoid body with the long limbs and kind of all the armor details that just didn't translate to a Masters of the Universe classics look. Now, one of the reasons that we didn't do 2000X off the top was because a lot of people at Mattel who were in management at the time of 2000X looked at the 2000X series as a bit of a failure which meant we had to kind of wait them out. We had to wait till new management came in, and you know, as people know, Mattel's gone through quite a few CEOs in the last few years, and it was kind of the same with middle-managed as well. Once they moved on, it meant that feeling of failure was going to sort of go away, and the 2000X line could be looked at again in new light. Now, those of you who watched the King Grayskull video in, the, in my series here on, on the channel will know that originally he was actually going to be the next 2000X figure. He was going to be using the Ice Armor He-Man body to make a true 2000X figure. Not with added articulation, but exactly in line as if it was the next 2000X figure and the line never ended. It just kept going. It didn't mean that was going to get all the articulation of classics. That happened when the Horsemen showed up with their prototype of He-Man at Comic-Con, and the idea of continuing the 2000X line as a 5-inch line with limited articulation went away, and instead we decided to start over from ground zero with character zero, or character one, in a brand new toy line, a brand new style, which became classics. Now, as Classics ran its course, and many years into the line, one, we were running out of characters, but we also found that the main characters just sold exponentially better than the second tier or third tier characters. So we knew we needed to find a way to be able to refresh those characters and keep them at market, because honestly, if we didn't keep sales up, there was no way we could keep the line going. Big shocker again, companies need to make money to keep product out there. And one way we did that was by doing the Filmation series. The whole point of the Filmation series was to be really an excuse to reissue the main characters again, but make them different enough from the original classics release that fans would want to buy them again, and there'd be a reason for buying them. And here's the big secret. The plan was the next year to start doing 2000X figures in 6-inch super articulated, where you would get buzz off on an insectoid body. The idea was this could be another way to resell the main characters as we were running out of characters. We would have looked at this as a completely separate but equal universe. Uh, new bios, you know, back to the true 2000X, it wasn't going to be part of classics it would have been a way to deliver the main characters again for fans and finally get to those highly articulated 6-inch scale 2000X figures. So a different line from the original 2000X. 
But as I departed Mattel and uh, went my way into the toy industry, like most of the plans that were in place, they were kind of tossed out, and the 2000X 6-inch line never followed the Filmation 6-inch line. But you can kind of see from the Filmation line what that would have been. We would have been able to do, or at least the plan was, to do all of the characters from 2000X in 6-inch scale, and it would have been a brand new line, much like Motu Origins is a brand new line for Mattel, and another interpretation of the main characters. So that's basically the story. Uh, the 2000X heads on the classic body weren't really quite what we wanted, and they didn't really work aesthetically anyway, and we just, unfortunately, uh, the plans to do a 2000X 6-inch articulated line never went forward. But the great thing about Motu is it could be interpreted in so many ways, and there's so many other ways to do it. Who knows which versions Mattel will come out with next. I know I'm excited, and I can't wait to see what the future of this property has to come from Mattel, Sony, Universal, and, well, anyone else who, uh, Netflix, everyone's working on it these days. Good luck, guys. I can't wait to see what's to come. Truly, it is an exciting time to be a He-Man and the Masters of the Universe fans. The best, I'm sure, is yet to come.